the garden route is widely considered to be one of the jewels in South Africa's tourism crown. Now, thousands of visitors make their way from Cape Town all the way to Nyssa, and then they just turn around and go back to Cape Town usually. Now, a group of operators, tourism operators in communities in the Eastern Cape want to change that. They've launched what they're calling Explorer's Way, which connects small town Eastern Cape to create a unique experience. And we're showing you just some of the beautiful pictures from that region and that route now. Let's speak to Jenny Newman. Uh, she is the Hogsback Tourism Coordinator and joins us virtually from there. I said it's chilly in Joburg this morning. I'm pretty sure Hogsback can show us a thing or two this morning. Jenny, thank you so much for your time. Tell us where uh, the work to put together Explorer's Way started. Well, the idea of the Explorer's Way began with, well, what, how do we get tourists to come to Hogsback? particularly, and then we thought if we developed a route from Port Elizabeth, taking us around to Adder, up to Crawfernet, through to New Bethesda, Mountain Zebra National Park, Craddock, down to Hogsback, Port Alfred, and back to Port Elizabeth. Um, and so that's where that came, that came about, because a lot of people know the garden route. A lot of people have done the garden route. And particularly um, the international visitors who want to see a different part of South Africa, and we hope our local visitors as well, will want to come and explore the Eastern Cape. Uh, we have so much to offer in this part of the world. The diversity, which includes um, the beaches, obviously, mm -hmm. the wildlife experience, both at a Kandabu Natural National Park and Mountain Zebra National Park. And then, of course, the um, nature and waterfalls and Cape Parrot, which is up on your screen now in Hogsback. And then um, also just the culture and history of our part of the world. So that's what we wanted to showcase, really. And also um, promoting that this is a great self-drive opportunity for people who want flexibility and can have that and organize it for themselves. What do you think has, has um, held visitors back from doing these kind of routes? Because all of these places, all of these towns on this, on this route are actually pretty well known. Uh, do you think it's a, it's a matter of a need for better marketing, um, a better coordination between your, your smaller tourism authorities? Yeah, better marketing. So we've actually reached out to the different tourism offices in those main nodes of the route. And um, and they've all participated and they're very, very excited that we have initiated uh, this route for, to showcase our part of the world. And also, um, you know, the, it kind of fills in that gap between the garden route and the wild coast, okay? And um, it's just, we just have so much to offer. Yeah, so you, re really, you really, really do, excited. because uh, when I was looking at the map that you sent me, and it's a beautiful animated map. If you want to have a look at it, you can go to explorersway.co.za. It really is an area and a route that has something for the entire family. And that's something um, uh, that perhaps has been missing, you know, telling people what you can experience here. What, what kind of family, you know, with different ages experience on this route? Yes, absolutely. You know, it's definitely the nature option um, and just very, very family friendly, but also for those who want a little bit more of excitement with abseiling that is offered in most towns along this route. Um, the hiking trails, canoeing in, um, uh, on the Fish River, all that sort of thing. Um, it's just, it's, it's, there's such an abundance of of gems to be discovered in, in our part of the world. Now, the tourism sector really went through the most uh, during um, the, the years of the pandemic and the lockdown. But some have told me that uh, one of the silver linings as a result of that lockdown was the fact that people couldn't travel abroad. And more and more people needed to look for different places to go to within our borders in South Africa um, and had to find different places to go and not just your main cities. Obviously, Cape Town is the big one. Durban um, is the big 
one as well. Do you think that's a gap that a route such as yours can come in and fill as we encourage South Africans to explore more outside of those major metros? Yes, absolutely. Find out what's happening in your own country and also the rural destination and the small town hospitality, which you simply don't find in the cities. So that's a huge selling point to come and visit our part of the world. Now, I know you guys, I'm wrapping up now, I know you guys are very busy these next few weekends. You're not resting on your laurels um, in the winter because it is a beautiful part of the world to visit in the winter. You've got your Winter Woolies campaign this weekend, and then next weekend you've got this big jazz and music festival happening. Tell us very quickly what's happening. Okay, so Winter Woolies this weekend is um, basically always the third weekend of July and it's an annual event, so, and pe people love coming to us back for the potential of, of snow. Um, next weekend is our Jazz Festival weekend, and we actually have the headline acts is um, Kelly Kamala, Luisa, and Zuka SA. So that's very exciting. Again, an annual event that is at the end of July. We also have the, our spring gardens, open garden season, which uh, is um, the 5th to the 15th of October. Oh. And then again, 2nd to the 12th of November. Uh, that's for the azaleas and the roses and the rhododendron. So that's a huge annual event that's run for the last 20 years in Hobsback. That's really something to look forward to. Jenny, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Jenny is the tourism coordinator out in Hawksback, but she was on telling us about this exciting new route that's been launched, um, a connecting small town Eastern Cape. It's called the Explorer's Way. You can go to uh, explorersway.co.za uh, to find out more, with a focus there being on connecting Trebecha, the Addo Elephant Park. You've got Kenton on Sea, Port Alfred, Hawksback, Craddock, the Mountain Zebra National Park, that I went to many years ago, and it is a gorgeous national park. Graaf Renet and the Camp de Boe National Park, as well as New Batesta, and the list goes on. A really beautiful and um, mostly untouched part of South Africa, well worth a visit. We thank Jenny and her team for their time this morning.